Hello everybody, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I recently watched a video by Michelle from the Creative Cove and in that video she made an accordion style flower press and I just love that idea. I've never done an accordion style journal before and I was really inspired to make something like that but I didn't need the flower press because I already have one. I want to make a journal like that and I had a look at my desk and I saw some junk mail envelopes that I just coffee dyed and put away and I thought how about I make a journal with these envelopes and make it like an accordion style and I did it and I loved it and I thought I'll share with you how I make this because it's really easy and I thought it would be fun to make a journal like this neutral or blank so you just prepare the pages up to that stage when you actually start adding focal points and images so basically you make yourself like a little art journal just ready to go the good thing about these uh, journals is that they never get too thick because of the spine and the way it's done if you like to work with textures and adding layers your journals might end up being like really having big mouths i'll show you what i mean this is my journal my healing journal and this is ridiculous because I love adding textures and this spine just can't take it. So once I fill it up, I will have to remove this and figure out a way to make a new cover for it. And I took about probably two thirds of the pages I already took out and yet I can't close it anymore. Look at it. So if I had a journal like this, I'd be able to, to have it like the same on both sides. So I'm really excited to show you. And I just put a ribbon closure, simple like that. And a fabric cover. Okay, so we have that. This is what I mean. These are envelopes that are coffee dyed with a bit of stenciling on top. Some book pages and it's ready to go you can add things to it uh, stamp on it glue pictures you can turn it into an album or you can turn it into a little s specimen kind of uh, book and then you come to this side so it has two sides there you go and do i have something here oh. I was going to make something here. Yep. Just just to show you like how you can then decorate and, and you have your backgrounds ready. There it is. So I'll just move this aside. So there it is. The pages are there. All day. Oh, there's one more. And the same on this side. And I think it's just awesome. Let me just put it together. I just love this idea because when I'm working in my journal, I prefer things to be flat. And I can do this. I can flatten it and I can work. I could even do like a whole story and continue the work on this side then turn it onto this side and of course you can make this neat i decided to have like a torn edges top and bottom and i added sewing at the end but you can make it neat it doesn't have to be grungy like this one uh, it's totally up to you how you decorate further on but i'll just show you how i made this one and then you can build on that idea perhaps and, and make a different style of the journal okay so let's start first with what we need for this project we need some envelopes i get my bills in these envelopes okay sometimes junk mail but mostly just bills electricity bills internet bills and things like that so i coffee stain them and you need 12 of these you need two for the covers and 10 for the pages okay then you need some fabric strips it can be like old linen and you decide on the 
length by placing it next to your envelope so if you're going to trim your envelopes uh, then you know you need shorter pages i'm thinking of uh, tearing the edges top and bottom so that's why my pieces are a little bit shorter but i try to have them approximately the same size and the wait just give me a second this is one and a half inches so you you'll need to be able to fold like this this is going to be the connection or the hinging between the envelopes all right so you need 11 of those and the length of course like i said it's going to depend on the size of your uh, envelope these envelopes are just give me one these envelopes are four and a half inches by nine inches yours might be different so you work with what you've got okay then you'll need some book pages because we'll need to cover these uh, bits here we don't want that i mean perhaps you do but i didn't want it so i'd rather have book pages just some different ones you have a few different ones like white more yellow or, or just whatever you have you know whatever you think might look good okay and then you'll need uh, two pieces of chipboard or if you're using uh for example like cereal boxes you will need glue two together to get this um, thickness. I prefer my uh, cover to be a little bit more sturdy. I think cereal box, if you just use one layer, it's probably going to be too soft. So if you're using that, just glue two together and then cut. And you cut, again, um, depending on how big your envelopes are. I cut these just slightly bigger than uh, my envelope here but i cut them shorter than my envelope on on this you see because i'm going to be tearing these edges and my envelopes will end up being smaller so i made them smaller and i'll have the sizes here it's eight and a quarter by four and three quarters or 21 by 12 centimeters so you'll need two of those and then you'll need two pieces of fabric that you're going to glue onto this chipboard okay um, could be some recycled fabric could be you know but you, you have to have a piece that's bigger than your cover okay i'll tell you the size this is three quarters of an inch larger on all sides than the, the actual um, cover okay because you have you need to have enough to fold over and glue okay so that's the materials you need for the construction and then to make all of this you'll need some strong instant coffee or you can use tea as well if you don't like the smell of coffee okay so you'll need glue of course a brush to apply the coffee a, a little sponge of some sort some white acrylic paint and you need some stencils or if you don't have stencils you can use bubble wrap if you have die cuts you can make your own stencils like i did here i have this die cut shape that i cut out of this um, plasticky thing that's normally in the file folder dividers so you can make your stencils like that or just use bubble wrap so i usually start like this i when i do them i do them in batches i do all 12 at once because you have to dye the front wait for it for it to dry and then do the back okay so i just dip my brush in the coffee and i just do this okay and i will just leave it aside to dry and then once it's dry i do the other side and that's it as simple as that i don't like to to kind of put them in the coffee in a tray because what happens usually is that the glue 
starts to um, dissolve and the envelopes open up and then that's more work for me i would have to glue them back together this way they stay closed okay so that's that part now once they like this we need to cover these areas okay and we need to cover this if you have envelopes without the wind window that's great you don't have to worry about that but i'm going to use them in my journal and i want to be able to uh, you know maybe glue pictures or draw on it so i want to uh, put a like a book page or paper of some sort um, i was thinking also that these can be turned into pockets and have it like a pocket book where you hold your ephemera but they're kind of really deep at the same time so i just you know i gave up on that idea all right so now we get our book pages and glue we can use the glue stick for this but i like to use this one magic fix it just dries a little bit quicker and the way i do it is i usually start in any section i just cover the area that i want book pages on with glue i think i've seen this technique from shanuki art when she was making her altered playing cards I think that's the first time I've seen this technique with the, with the glue. So I'm just going to get this and just place it there. Just like that. And maybe we can cut it off. Okay. This I can cut off so it's not in my way. Just roughly like that. Okay. So now with this part, maybe, maybe I can use this whole page up to here. And then again, I apply the glue to the areas that I want covered and also here. Like that. And I just place this. Okay. Let's do one more. Now put it aside. This needs to dry really, really well. Otherwise, it won't work has to be really dry for the next step okay this one is kind of see-through have the pages in, uh, either going like this like or like that so that they kind of more like background rather than text so we're going to cover them with some paint and it's not there really to be read it's just So that's that part. So you do that for all 
12 of the, the uh, envelopes. And the ones that are on the cover, uh, you just need one side. And you, you can decide whether you want the side with the book pages or just the plain one like I have here. For that one, you don't even have to coffee dye the other side, but you know, I just do. So. Okay, so these need to be really dry before we do anything else to them. And because I don't want to stop the recording and wait for it to dry, I glued some earlier. I have them here. And I just want to show you how you peel them. Okay, this is what they look like once you peel those pages this one is just before i peel and i just grab just feel for feel for where that there's no glue you see like that and then you just start doing this and of course you have to make sure that you don't actually peel the whole thing off if that happens just grab a piece of book page and glue and fix it so let's see here okay. and why i like this is because uh it's not the edge is not too um hard it's kind of soft and i like that effect this one seems to be glued all the way That's done. Right here. It's done. So we do that for all twelve of them, and then once you get them all to this stage, coffee dyed with book pages glued and peeled off then you get to paint them Yay. and I, I painted some already but just on one side and it's good if you have a few different stencils you know but if you don't you can just use the sponge or like I said just the bubble wrap Let's use this stencil that I made by myself. I have a piece of acetate here that I'm going to use as my palette. And I have some white acrylic paint here. Oh, forgot to put my gloves on. All set. So I put the paint. And I have this, just a sponge. And I like to, because this is like... There's going to be 10 pages and you don't want them all to be the same. You, don't, you know, you don't want them to have the same stencil applied in the same spot. At least I didn't want to. So sometimes I'll stencil the edges, sometimes the middle, sometimes the bottom, sometimes the top. You know, you vary. And uh, if you can, several stencils would be good. I'm just looking here now. just realized I had this... Um, laminated little flowers that I cut out with the punch and I don't know if you can see but it gave me circles so I can even use that as a stencil okay so like I said I'm going to use this one on the cover and maybe I can have that somewhere like this and I just dip a bit of paint and just go nice it doesn't look nice okay let's do have some here again you just dip and uh, my sponge is I kind of washed it and uh, drained it really well but it is moist so there's no need to add water to this acrylic color it's already I lo i'm loving it it's great so i'll put that aside okay now let's do one with the text 
okay now uh, the aim is to blend these pages with the envelope so i like to if there's a lot of pages i like to add more color there where the pages are okay I have a bit more because that text is kind of really you know showing a lot not so much here because the book page is brown but on the white it does show a lot okay so let's do some here So you, you cover some of the text, but you also cover a little bit of that area just to bring it all together. Now let's finish the rest of these. that I forgot to put book page there but what I can do is just add a little bit more color and I might repeat when it's dry to get a better coverage okay and maybe I can do this just on the side See what I mean? Like even if you're using the same stencil, you don't always follow the same rule, like top and bottom corner or the middle. You you vary, you, you know, to get more uh, different uh, results. So here I might just I might turn it this way. I just do the middle. Or even just like this. Oh, it looks nice. Okay, now let's try some other stencil. I like this one. With the, this shape. Do the middle. And then this one, um, I want to use this one here. So you get the idea, you coffee stain them, you glue the pages and then you do stenciling with white paint on top of it. So what I'll do, I'll complete the rest of them and then I will be back. I stenciled all of them front and back and they just need to dry a little bit. Um, I love how this one looks 
Where is that other one? Yeah, this one I tried some flowers. And they need to dry really well. And I thought while they're drying, we can work on our covers. We have our fabric and we have our chipboard. And um, it doesn't really matter how you turn it because you can decide that later on what you want in the front and what you want on the back okay so we need to glue those two together i will show you how i do it quickly with this one i just add glue i'm just using tacky craft glue This is probably already too much. And I grab my silicon brush and I just spread it. Because I don't want it to seep onto my fabric. I have to work fast because it dries quickly. do this with a piece of cardboard or with your fingers but I'm not a big fan of glue being on my fingers to be honest <laughs> okay so turn on to this side Now the corners, we need to cut down corners out and you don't cut all the way to this, you leave about two millimeters like this. I'll just trim this a little bit. I can see it's a bit big. Don't need that much. This one too. Again, I have to grab the glue. brush and I like to do the longer sides first like how this looks. Now with the corners, I do this. Just grab the glue. I spread the glue and I go over a little bit of the fabric here. But I also go here in these corners. Okay, and then I push this in like that and then like that I hope you can see I just hold a little bit and then press it down as 
you can see here I have a little bit of excess it's not too late to just cut it off you can see this I'll try and make it clearer on this side so I add the glue These ones, first I push them down. And then I take this little corner and push that in. And this one as well, so push down. it a little bit so that it's kind of glued and I just fold okay if you are not confident with your corners practice on smaller pieces of cardstock with the fabric or you can get one of those uh, co metal corner protectors and they hide every mistake i love using them they not just look cool but like i said they make the corners look really neat okay so now i won't do the other one in front of the camera i don't want to waste time on that because i've already prepared several actually and a purple one and a green one. Mm, let's do the green one. Okay, this needs to be dry. Now what I want to do is um, decide on the final size. I'll just grab this one. They opened on this side. And I'll start by just tearing this end. And like I said, you can make this neat by uh, cutting them straight, but I really like this uh, look. And do this. And then what I do is I glue all the loose bits. And I am going to uh, sew around, but I still like to close them up on both ends. Then once they're all torn to the proper size and glued, I like to ink the edges. I'll just use some black ink. I'll just go around like this.
and the first one is ready okay so what i need to do is uh, approximately to them all to the same size they're not going to be the same but that's fine uh i want that you know like i don't know if you can see here they are kind of similar but sometimes they this one's you can see it's shorter than that one but in the end uh, if you keep placing them kind of in the middle it all works out well in the end although you don't want them sticking out of the cover too much okay so let's do one more together um, i start by tearing this side that's closer to the window because i don't want to tear right across the window it wouldn't be good see what i mean then Okay, let's see if anything needs to be glued. No. So we just try. So just like this. We didn't cover this. I probably wanted that one on that end. Okay, so I will do the same for the rest of them. I will tear the top and the bottom, glue all the loose bits, and then uh, ink around the edges. And once I finish that, I will be back. Okay, I tore the edges from all of the pages and I inked them all around on both sides and we have our cover and on the cover we are going to use the envelopes that we didn't glue the pages the pages on top so these are definitely going to be the front and the back and now we have to decide how we want to arrange these it seems to be that because of the way my envelopes were they were all with the window and i had to cover the window that means that I can have, like, for example, like this. If I have one plane, then I would put one with the book page. And then I have that one plane, and then I would have one with the book page. And then when I have, you know what I mean? It just, I would just keep going like that. And I will probably try to have them, uh, you know, so that the same pattern does not repeat. For example, if I have this one here, I will go and put that one next to it. You know, I would look for maybe this one. And you see on the back, that's how it's going to be. Okay. So I will try to vary them. And we have our strips here mine were a little bit too long so i had to trim them and i make them approximately the same size as the cover okay so we know this is going to be our front like this or is it better like that 
I think like this so it doesn't really matter maybe this one okay that means it's going to open like that we need to hinge those two pages back from this side so what I do I usually start with one so I need to add glue to this side here run a bit of glue and I might use my finger for this although I hate it and then I tend to do this you know you could put a mark there where the middle is but I just like to eyeball it and then I turn this side. Right. Okay. so now it's much easier to glue this one when you already have that so I add glue here now when you glue this one you don't want to go all the way you know you want to leave a tiny bit of space there hope you can see so that you can fold okay let's test it so this in the end, we will glue this one here, and that is our first page. Now, the next page, we said we're going to use this one. Let's see if the text has any direction. It seems to be going that way. So we want to have this one here. But now, uh, we had the hinge on this side. Now we need to have it on that side, like this. Okay, so I'll glue this one first. And I know it's going here. Now it needs to go here. So again, turn that. Just check. The glue. Again, we need to leave some space. Oh, this feels so nice and squishy. That's how it looks. So it's always on the outside there's a hinge, fabric hinge. And I suppose you can also add more papers there, signatures. It's basically like a mini spine. And it doesn't really matter that sometimes it's not straight in the middle. You see how I have more fabric on this one than on that one? It's it's totally fine. It doesn't really matter because you will always be viewing like this and it doesn't have to be perfect in fact there is a beauty in its imperfection i think okay so now we can have this one here 
does this text go that way yeah so now again we need to add the hinge from that side okay. so as you can see it's always um, it always goes like this once on the back then on the front then on the back and the next one is going to be on the front and you do that until you get to the last one and we came to the end so now we can how do we do this this way needs to go underneath here but maybe we'll do it on this side our journal we do that and we do that and it's complete <laughs> i love it but there's one more step that i like to do before i glue this page to the cover and that one as well because when i've done the first one i glued everything down and then i went to do the stitching and that was a nightmare because uh, this is not really easy to bend uh, and maneuver when you're doing the sewing and you have this is basically it you know you have to keep turning it and um, of course this is a step that you don't need to do like it's all glued down you don't have to do the stitching but it just looks so much better with it i think anyway so i am going to do that now and then I will be back to, to finish this because um, I will stitch all the pages apart from this one and this one. And then once I glue it down, I will stitch just that one and just this one onto the cover. As you can see here, it actually went all the way to the cover. And another thing is, when I stitched this, I realized oh, I could have put a little like a nameplate or something. And it was already too late because I glued everything down. So if you decide that you want any sort of um, metal bits that will have things showing on this side, you do it now you know, before you glue the pages. So if you want to add that metal uh, nameplate, book plate, whatever it's called, you do it before you actually glue the pages together. Okay, I'll just go quickly and do the sewing and I will be back. All right, I'm back. And here is our journal. I have done stitching on all pages apart from the front and up from the first and the last. And I think oh, it's actually going this way. There you go. It's quite long and same on this side and I've done a straight and zigzag stitch combination because I thought it just adds to the grunginess but you know it doesn't look dirty I think it's just grungy you know in a nice way I hope so anyway anyway now what's left to do is attach this to our cover and First fold it. Now 
fold it the wrong way because the fabric needs to be on the outside like that like so okay so we said we will have this like that so we need to glue this one down And for this, I will actually use acetone-based glue because it dries quickly and it's really strong. And I'll just apply everywhere. Because it's new, it's just start. Did we say? Yeah. So just in the middle. I have to stand up. Now I can take it to the sewing machine, of course, once it's dry and just do the same as I've done with the rest of the pages. because now we have to pages to fill. Now, all I need to do is put that through the sewing machine and this one. I'll do that quickly. I'm just waiting for the glue to dry a little bit more. And then that would be it. Here we go. I won't lie to you. Sewing was a bit challenging with this one. Uh, simply because um, because uh, it is long but also with the cover the chipboard is really tough and if you do it get a heavy duty needle like really strong one not the thin one but really the tough one that's not going to break mine didn't break my machine passed the test but 
still it was really noisy when I did stitching on the cover. Anyway, we can have a look at the journal now. Oh, I love it. it. makes me want to get my paints and then pictures and start gluing and drawing in it immediately. Just looking at this inspires me. Okay, so here is our blank grungy accordion style journal made from junk mail envelopes so we have this one the red one no that belongs to the other channel I have this green one I haven't used this one when we use it yep i think it's going to look good so the way I work out this, okay, it is exactly like that, and then I twist it here around, and I take it to the other side, like so, and then I make it. This ribbon, I think, has a wire. It does, so I would probably take the wire out. I prefer it to be soft and not so stiff. So, here are our journals. And I think I have enough envelopes to make two more. Okay, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun watching and I hope you got inspired and uh, perhaps it gave you some ideas how you can use your envelopes and recycle them and turn them into art journal kind of thing. Thank you so much for watching and I hope I see you soon again. Bye for now.